Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150. From the factory, not all F-150s come with a factory hitch and if you don't want to plan on putting a bumper tow, you can pick up a hitch here and that way you can load up your accessories and still tow. And this one is a nice clean look. We have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and for the most part, our cross tube is pretty hidden. So really all that you're gonna see is the receiver opening underneath the bumper. Now when loading up your accessories, you're gonna need a 5 8 pin and clip as it does not come with the hitch. A lot of times your accessories will come with those when you pick those up. Uh, if you plan on leaving your accessories or your ball mount in place, you might wanna look at a locking pin and clip. That way you can lock that in place and know that no one's gonna walk away with those accessories. If you plan on pulling a trailer, you're gonna have safety chain loops here that make it super easy to hook up your standard S hooks. Even a larger Cleva style is gonna be no problem. And speaking of towing, you are gonna to want to adhere to the weight capacities when you have your accessories loaded. So as far as towing goes, your gross trailer weight rating out the gate is gonna be 6,000 pounds, which is the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. You also have a tongue weight rating of 900 pounds, and that's the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. And that should be 10 to 15% of your gross trailer weight rating. Uh, but this really comes down to accessories. So if you have a bike rack, cargo carrier, you're not gonna wanna exceed 900 pounds, but that is a quite a bit of weight. I really don't foresee anyone overloading that. Now this can be used with a weight distribution hitch if you're trying to squeeze out a little bit more capacity. And with that weight distribution hitch, it bumps up your gross trailer weight rating to 10,000 pounds. So pretty heavy duty there. Your tongue weight also goes up a little bit at oh, 1,000 pounds, but you do wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing. Compare that with the hitch and also any of the components you'll be using to tow and take the lowest of those numbers so you don't overload them. When choosing a ball mount or any accessories, you want to make sure that it's going to stick out far enough to either hook up to your trailer or be able to stow your uh, bike racks or cargo carriers in that vertical configuration. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point, we're looking right at about three inches, so I don't worry too much. Uh, now keep in mind, if you are using a bike rack or cargo carrier and folding it up, probably not going to be able to open up your tailgate, so something to kind of keep in mind there. Now when choosing a ball mount, you need to determine the rise or drop necessary, so you can measure the coupler on your trailer and then compare it with our 17 and a half inches that we have here for our ground clearance, and then you can determine that riser drop necessary. Now keep in mind if you have suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks, you're gonna have ground clearance, but as you go up incline, sometimes they can tilt towards the ground and make contact, so just keep that in mind on some severe cases. Depending on what size spare you have under your truck, it can get a little bit tight underneath here. Ours is uh, making contact with our hitch, but I was able to get this back up in place. The tires we have on this one are a 245 70 17. So if you have larger tires, that might be something you may not be able to get your full size spare back up. But if you have this tire size or anything smaller, it should work just fine. Overall, getting this installed is fairly easy to do. You can definitely do this in your driveway or garage. I do recommend having an extra set of hands just to raise that hitch up into place to get your hardware started. But other than that, it's not too hard to do. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look. To begin our installation, first you're gonna to wanna to remove your spare tire. So lower that down, get it out of the way. It's gonna give us a lot more room to work underneath here. And then we'll head over to our passenger side frame rail. Here we're going to find a ground attached with a 10 millimeter bolt so we'll go ahead and get this removed and we're going to be there's new hardware included with the hitch so we're not going to be reusing this bolt you can kind of hold on to that if you want but either way it's not going to go back on once that's removed you can just take your ground wire and set it up here for now we'll reinstall that later on our driver's side, we have this large harness that we'll need to remove. There's a circular part that clips into the frame rail and there's tabs on it. What I recommend doing, you can use a flathead screwdriver, just push one of the tabs in. There's gonna be one on the other side. You might wanna put a little bit of backwards pressure just to kind of pull this out. But once you push that tab in, that'll slide out. There's also a plastic push pin in the frame, so we'll just pry this off and that's gonna get this out of the way. I recommend getting this zip tied up out of the way because we're gonna be mounting up some hardware and just for getting our hitch up, it's gonna be a lot easier with this uh, tucked away. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of run this up over this cross member and then just with zip ties, zip this up out of the way. As 
On both sides of the vehicle, we're gonna grab our U-shaped spacers, and these are gonna fill up the gap that's in this inset. We'll need to make sure that we're not covering up this ground hole because eventually we're gonna be using that new bolt to get that ground wire back in place. So take this, center it up. You can see we still have our gap here. And then we're gonna just take some masking tape or we have painter's tape here, whatever you may have to kind of keep this stuck in place. And then just make sure that this is notched out to be able to get that hardware in place. We still have our access hole here, so we're looking good. We'll go ahead and tape up the other side as well. We need to get our hardware in place and we'll start with this U-shaped spacer hole. We're gonna grab our carriage bolt, our fish wire and our spacer block. And there's an access hole that's on the back of the frame here, but I don't think this is gonna fit. So we're gonna use this access hole that's further up the frame. Take your coiled end and feed this through the hole. And then as you feed it back, feel for that coiled end. You may have to kind of fish around for it, but then we'll pull that through. I'm gonna put a little bend on this end just to kind of keep it from pulling through the frame. And then we'll take our spacer block. You can drop this in the frame. And then your carriage bolt, you'll just thread onto this coiled section. And then we'll grab this tail end here, push the carriage bolt in the frame. And then as you kind of bring this over, you may have to jostle it around a little bit. And you'll see that this is gonna be able to pull through here. Now, when we raise the hitch up, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this isn't in the way. So for now, we're just gonna push this back in the frame reel. Our other mounting point is gonna be the hole that's towards the rear of the vehicle on the lower side, really close to that access hole. So what we'll do here, feed this over. Drop in our spacer block. We'll feed on our carriage bolt. And then on this one, we're gonna be using an extra spacer block that's gonna go between the frame and the hitch. So it may not stay on here, but what we'll do is I'm gonna push this back in. I'm gonna take my spacer block and then just kind of bend our fish wire here so it stays in place because as we raise the hitch up, we want this to slide in place over. We'll just go ahead and repeat the same steps on the other side of the truck. You're gonna want an extra set of hands to raise the hitch up in place. Make sure those bolts are passed into the frame for now. And then we're gonna feed our fish wires through the corresponding holes. And then we'll just slide this up, pulling out the slack as necessary on our fish wires until we get this all lined up. And we're gonna to try to get one of these pulled through on each side just to kind of support the hitch. So kind of align this up. And then once you kind of get one started there, you can get the other one in place. That's gonna hold our hitch up. And uh, once you kind of have that held in place, what you can use the hitch for some downward pressure, but you're gonna to wanna to remove your fish wire. And with your serrated flange nut, you'll just get it hand started on one side, on, actually on both sides, one on each. And that way we can get the rest of the hardware up nice and easy. So just go through and get those flange nuts just hand started on each of them. And before we get everything tightened down, we wanna get our ground wire back in place so we have our new bolt. Uh, and so just kind of look to make sure that it's aligned with that hole. And you can bend this tab if you need to. I think ours, we should be able to just kind of shoot this in. Now, this is about the same diameter, so it kind of threads into the ground. So just kind of hold the ground in place and then thread this into that factory hole. And if you need a little bit of extra slack, uh, you can remove this plastic push pin just to kind of get the, uh, and right now it's kind of tight on this wire, so if you need to, you can remove that to help you along. And once you have that started, you can zip this down with a 13 millimeter socket. You don't have to get crazy. We are going to torque this down. We're also going to go through and make sure that our hitch is sitting exactly where we want it, and we'll snug all of these down with a 15 16 socket. Now I didn't find a torque setting for this bolt for our ground. But once you kind of draw this in, make sure that this is again, just snug and that it's gonna make a proper ground long-term. So I'll just tighten this down. 
And then we'll grab our 15 16 socket and put it on our torque wrench. And the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manual. And we'll go ahead and get these all torqued down properly. If you need a torque wrench to torque all your bolts down, we have these available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. But this is gonna make sure long term that our hitch is gonna be tight enough to where it's not gonna become loose. So we'll go through, get these all torqued down properly. Now the wiring harness that we removed and zip tied up, that's great to get it out of the way. You can totally leave it like this and it'll be fine. But if you want, you can actually pull this down and the hole that's in the hitch here is gonna become a new mounting point. So you can pop that in place. We're not able to get that top one, but with that popped in place, everything torqued down, you've officially installed your hitch. And that was a look at installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150.